Seek him who made the Pleiades and Orion, who turns deep darkness into the morning, and darkens the day into night, who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out upon the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 94. Glory to the Father and to the Son. 
A reading from the book of Jeremiah, the 15th chapter beginning in the 10th verse. Woe is me, my mother, that you ever bore me, a man of strife and contention to the whole land. I have not lent, nor have I borrowed, yet all of them curse me. The Lord said, Surely I have intervened in your life for good. Surely I have imposed enemies on you in a time of trouble and in a time of distress. Can iron and bronze break iron from the north? Your wealth and your treasures I will give as plunder without price for all your sins, throughout all your territory. I will make you serve your enemies in a land that you do not know. For in my anger a fire is kindled that shall burn forever. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound uncurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of John, the 19th chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic, and the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, <coughs> Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my clothes among themselves, <coughs> and for my clothing they cast lots. And this is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Morton. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Saviour, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. With you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O oh God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us to glory in the cross of Christ, that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthy lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain in you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace 
peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through the mercies of Christ Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God and Father of all, whom the whole heavens adore, let your whole earth also worship you, all nations obey you, all tongues confess and bless you, and men and women everywhere love you and serve you in peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him, from generation to generation in the church, and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We determined to go through this Holy Week with homilies or meditations on those who accompanied Jesus in his Passion. And yesterday we looked at Simon of Cyrene, whose life was entirely changed when the cross of Christ was laid on his shoulders. And tonight I'd like to look at our Blessed Lady and St. John, the patron of this parish. The triptych behind me has been opened just for today because it shows Mary on the left and John on the right, with our Lord glorified already in heaven, which is why St. John looks old, uh, because it's from a, a different time from when he was a young man standing by the cross. There's a lot of backstory in everything that we read about the Passion or about the whole life of Jesus. Peter and Andrew, the fishermen, didn't just get up and follow Jesus. They knew him through and through. And so when he said, it's time, follow me, they did immediately. It, it's, it's not explicable otherwise. In the same way, John, the youngest of the 12 our Lord chose to be his closest companions, was obviously someone who knew him through and through, as they all did, including Judas. They knew him, and they put their trust in him, and with John it went right to the foot of the cross. He did not understand, I'm sure, what was going on, not a lot of it, but he stood with Mary, who may well have been related to him. We don't know, but there's a lot of Marys in the story and one of them may well have been John's mother, and therefore Mary another relation, but that's pure speculation. But she knew that John was the special love of Jesus, the love of his life. And so when he handed over John to Mary as his son, and then said to Mary, here is your son, he was doing something very, very tremendous. Jesus had brothers and sisters, at least half-brothers, half-sisters. None of them were around. None of them were the ones who were entrusted, to, uh, to whom Mary was entrusted. Now she was desolate and left alone. No, it was John that Jesus trusted to give a home to Mary. And the scripture, as usual, just jumps in and says, from that moment, he took her to his own home. But imagine what on, went on between the giving over and the getting on. I always think of them leaving Calvary Hill, having taken the body down, and John supporting Mary down the hill, or maybe Mary supporting John. And Mary looking back and seeing the cross, must have thought, I wish I was leaving with Jesus. But all I have is John. 
And then she came to realize that if she had John, she had Jesus. If she had part of the body of Christ, as St. Paul would define it, she was with her son in a most intimate way, as much as when he was in her arms in Bethlehem or at the table as he was growing up. She was given John to learn that when two or three are gathered together, Jesus said, I will be there in the midst of them. And so he took her home. And eventually he took her to Ephesus, where he became the first bishop. And I've been to the top of the mountain, well, it's not much of a mountain, but top of a hill where Mary's house was. And certainly they have found first century um, what do you call them? Fun fundamentals, foundations of Mary's house. And I believe it probably was because they would be hiding her away from the Romans and from the, those who wanted to persecute the Christians, whether Jews or Romans. And John was bravely being the bishop, but I bet he put Mary slightly to the side or up the hill so that she would be safe because that's what Jesus had asked him to do. And so we leave them there, but not exactly, because John wrote, or at least dictated some, or at least inspired, the last book of the Bible, the Revelation of St. John the Divine, where he said, a woman clothed with the sun. Now, clothed with the sun, is just a metaphor for brilliantly shining. A woman clothed with the sun was seen in heaven. And John it was that wrote about Mary being clothed with the sun. And that's why the triptych shows them still together, even with John in his own image, Mary on the left, and the four Gospels testifying to Jesus and to whom he was, and to the resurrection, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And so we leave John and Mary there together, and plod on through Holy Week with the rest of the disciples at the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.